Guys, welcome back to The Art of Nothing, joined by my guy, Jordan Simming. What's up, baby? Bro, what's up, my guy? I haven't seen you all week. What have you been up to? Man, busy as usual. Busy as usual. Business is booming. Business is booming. I've just been just been painting, bro. That's about it, really. Mm. Painting and just spending a bit of time with myself. What are you learning? Not much. <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Just cruising, man. Just cruising. Um... Honestly, I've just been just been painting. That's all I can say, really. Uh, making a few sales too. That's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's just normal now, eh? Uh, <laughs> consistency is key. A lot of hand gestures. <laughs> yeah, well, what's going on off that? What's, you've been, it's a power move. Is it? Um, Tate does it, doesn't he? Um, Tate, Elon Musk, uh, who else? Like Donald Trump. Is it an actual thing? Like, what does it represent? Uh, some would say Freemason, but it's a it's a it's it's a power thing. Mm, I love that. Thank you. Have you ever d- tried doing it during sex? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm just uh, what have you been up to? No, nah, I was up in the Goldie. It was uh, cool. I could. Um, I know. I know you've said this before. I was talking to Normie. I could see us up there. Eh? I've been telling you this, bro. Yeah. I could definitely see us up there. Do you know what my biggest flex is at the moment? Staff travel. So one of my favorite things to do is like work, at, like do work on planes. So I've just been booking flights for like day trips. So I went up to the Goldie, had a coffee for made, and just flew home. And you're flying around for 30, 40 bucks. Why not? Could I mean, cut, do you, you could, actually work for them? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Who, who, who got you that? Oh, Caleb. Not, not, not Caleb, Caleb, Horny Mutters. Uh, just this guy, bro. I've not, he put me on like a couple of years ago and he used to fly around all the time, but I'm really back in that phase right now. So maybe go Gold Coast tomorrow, uh, hang out with QC or might go Tasmania. Mm. You been in Tasmania? Yes, I have. Any good? Um, I mean, I went, I went with the love of my life. So yeah, at the time it was nice, but I wouldn't go back there. Which one of the five? <laughs> <laughs> the five loves of life. <laughs> um, the five loves. I have been to Tasmania. The, to, it's like the wineries down there are really, really nice. Why is that? It's just, just the weather for it? Yeah, the weather, um, nice and cool. The, the ground's a lot moist, moist, so the berries are much sweeter. Mm. Well, um, the old baby holding technique got a bit of a roasting on Instagram from me. <laughs> yeah, that was weird, bro. That was weird. You've always been like that, though. I don't like babies. I feel yeah. like you're. I feel like you're. You're changing, though. Like you're going through a phase of like, you know, before you wouldn't even, you wouldn't even consider holding one. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like. I like kids when they get to like one to about seven. You know, when they get a bit more of a bit of personality about them. Yeah. Like the newborn thing. Like, like obviously you're pumped for your mates and. The biggest kick I get out of it is seeing how proud they are of yeah. their kids. So like that gives me a kick, and obviously hanging out for Larry. But yeah, I don't, new babies just don't really do it for me. Eh? Yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, surely, uh, ho- surely hold your own neck up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, the, there's there's a couple of like pros and cons with new babies. Like as from my uncle's point of view, right? Like, I mean, you posted that for pussy. <laughs> you use Larry's baby to try and pick up chicks. <laughs> That's what you do. Is what you're telling me right now. <laughs> is that you don't like babies, so but I've never seen you smile like that around a baby before. Yeah, and you, you know, I like it's the energy. And like Larry and Leash are uh, great people and they know what I'm like. <laughs> great people. Great people, great, great parents. A <laughs> couple of your just, best mates. <laughs> The just greatest. Bag, just bagging kids right in front of him. But they, they said they're exactly the same too. But then like they give you the baby. You're like, yeah, let's have a photo. And I'm just like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. You're holding it. I, like don't feel anything. I don't feel anything when I see. If I see a puppy, I'm like, yo. Yeah, yeah, of course. But uh, is it, it does it change when obviously you, you're a dad? Yeah. What's yeah. that moment like? Uh, it's addictive. Like the smell of a baby. What, fresh out the womb or like? Yeah. What does it smell like? <laughs> I mean, uh, like not fresh, fresh out of the womb, but like, you know, not like a couple of hours out, but like, yeah, it's it's amazing. It's amazing, bro. It's, a, it's, it's one of the most beautiful things that you can ever, you can ever experience and stressful. But yeah. it's beautiful. Yeah, it's life, you know, like when you really think about it, like when you think of it from... With a th- through your third eye, it's like 
it's a brand new life that you've just created uh, with a total stranger. So <laughs> it's like, fuck, did I really pick the right person here? You know what I mean? <laughs> Shit. Fingers are a bit long. Toes are a bit, you know, short. But uh, nah, it's, it's a beautiful thing, man. Creating life is a beautiful thing. And the opportunity to do it is second to none. Two questions here. Yes. Um, do you fall in love with the baby while they're still pregnant? Like, do you form an attachment to it? And two, do you fall more in love with the mum after, after obviously giving birth and seeing yeah. all that? I think, so, uh, a few things that I've, I've taken away, and I actually have conversations with my friends that have got, ha- having kids now. Um, when me and my ex had our two daughters, um, I shout out to the girls. Shout out to the girls. See you, t- see you on Saturday. Yeah, I'll see you on Saturday um, too. We No photos too, mister. Nah. <laughs> oh, they're in that age bracket. Are they? Are they still? <laughs> no, in? like a personality. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, hey, you got great kids. Yeah, Fuck. they're beautiful. Oh, Claire, come, here. <laughs> Claire, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Jump on the photo. Fuck, see you later. Man. <laughs> Get out. Go that's, back to you. That's Chico. <laughs> yeah, hundred oh. No, they love Chico, eh? Sorry, where were we? Um, so I used to play music. Um, music like to the womb, like uh, read, um, <laughs> broken English. No, I genuinely did. I genuinely did, and I do, used to do all these things. But once they were born, bro, I, f- I fell so in love with them that I actually forgot about my partner, like her wants and her wants and needs. I've I've heard this before. Like so, you fall more in love with your kid than yeah. I, I I sort of was like she was just like a. She was just a middleman between me and my daughters. Um, but like, not in a bad way. I, d- I didn't actually mean to. So it was it was hard because like, you know, we'd wake up at different times. Like I'd cook the girls breakfast, walk them to school, you know, pick them up, make them breakfast, dinner. So I mean like, you know, did you, did you have to cheat on me? No, I'm <laughs> joking. Sorry, sorry. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I did all these things. Don't clip that up too, you can. <laughs> Um, but I, yeah, you, you forget about, you forget about, sort of forget about your partner, which is sad. Uh, a lot of, a lot of men don't, but I, I was one of the ones that did, but it wasn't intentionally. I just was just so like, so hands on with my kids mm. and that extra time we got, like I was just fully attached and yeah, it was just a hard, it was cause they, cause females get like postnatal depression from, you know, like, because you're like. You're always with your children. You're always, you know. So it's it's quite it's quite sad. It can be a sad it, moment in time too. It's it changes like their whole like life and identity. And um, Danny Chia, his wife, uh, just when they had a baby, she just didn't want to lose her identity. Where she didn't want to be sitting around watching like Wiggles and stuff like that. So that's why yeah. they started their book A B to Jay Z. Oh right. Yeah, killed it. Like made bulk really? cash off it. But um, that's a, that's a cool. Yeah, I think because th- they wanted to teach their kids about like. Nah, so the book was like Endless for Nas and he, he rules the world. Like it's always right. sort of based off the rap. So cool. it would be, it's such a big change, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you look back and you go, fuck, like, you know, there was definitely some points or some signs, but I mean, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful thing, man. You're bringing life into this world and, you know. Mm. I was on uh, Larry's farm. It's got a farm. Yeah. Oh, like a bit of acreage. Some land, yeah. yeah it's got some land. Oh, it's all on the hill. Just walking around, just trying to show me around. <laughs> Snaky. Yeah, nah, that ain't it. You know when you come from New Zealand, you just automatically think snakes are everywhere? Yeah. But There's like, definitely snakes. He said he's caught, he's, he's got a little chook, chook pen, chook pen, and um, Alicia come home one time, and there was a python in the chook pen, and it oh. killed one. I was like, nah. Nah, it. bro. <laughs> oh, nah, man. I can't do that shit, eh? Get me home. Um, but yeah, yeah, I, uh, what was going to say? So I've got to talk you through something that happened yesterday. So you might've seen on my stories, I got a haircut. I got this fucking haircut, bro. I walked into this barber shop, right? And the barber, like, you know, the back seat, like the seat right at the back. Who goes there? The best barber or the bad barber? The bad barber. Oh, okay. The worst barber, right? Goes out the back. So I was thinking to myself. I was like, you know what? I really need a haircut. I'm going to give the bro a shot. And this guy gave me the worst haircut I've ever give, been, like, I've ever had, ever. Give a look. Like, okay, I'll give you a look. Like, it's pretty fucked. Like, it's, like 
It's fucked. Okay, side side. Like it's fucked. Bro, and the guy <laughs> Bro, have you ever had a Mohawk fate? But like the guy the guy the guy the bro, the guy goes the guy says to me, he blame and I, I go, man, well, I think you've gone too high here. <laughs> you can feel it one, away. one this side went high and this side was low. And he goes, Oh no, man, I'm sorry, I'm going off your old, old fate. And I, I, you seen how long my hair was? And I was like, <laughs> Bro, Mello, are you sweet? Bro, he's like, nose is right up to your head. <laughs> um, bro, the guy just gives me the fucking fate of doom, man. And I was sitting there shaking. You know when you get a bad haircut, you're like, I could oh, I could kill this guy here. <laughs> and, he, and the fact was, he wasn't taking ownership of it. Oh, that hurts. I'm like, come on, man. Talk to me here. Talk to me. So he gave me the fryer tuck of doom. And <laughs> like... I'm struggling picking up chicks, let alone with a with a sh, uh, with a schlid. So, like, there goes another couple of weeks with no fucking tail, tail man. Mm. And um, I've I've changed my whole aspect. I've changed my whole uh, outlook. Sorry, I've changed my whole outlook on the on the thought of love. Bringing up the thing. Oh, so, sorry. Did you pay? Did you pay for the haircut? Like what? No way. And he was sweet. No, he wasn't sweet. But I was like, bro, get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> you fucked my hair, hair up. <laughs> and then I don't want to name it because the guy who actually owned the barbershop is actually mint, mm. like pretty grouse. I was watching him cut. But like this guy, bro, I was like, can you just take some thickness out of my hair? <sighs> I was like, no way. Like these guys set me up. I, I might even go back there today and fucking throw some shit around because it's... <laughs> It was just willy nilly, bro. It was just willy nilly, eh? And and just the way he was treating me was like, sort of like trying to shut me down before the owner of Kevin was like, bro, yeah, this is, yeah, yeah, like no, 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 it's your fault, it's your fade's fault. And I was like, bro, I had a fucking afro. Yeah, you had a mop, eh? Mop. So I was like, how? So, anyways, I'll be wearing hats for the next two months. Yeah, just get a like the sides is all right, isn't it? You just need to fix up the top. I mean. You can polish a turd, but it's always going to be shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred. And that's just what it is. And sometimes God challenges us like this, ice. Like sometimes God puts these things in our life to challenge us. Mm. It's good things, bro. No challenge, no growth. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been up to? Nothing, bro. I've been like, fuck, I love work now, eh? Like, even just like the chats we've been having, like obviously super tight with Artie now. Um, the types of conversations we've been having, not just around clothes, but like impact we can have. Uh, obviously really tight with Quaid again. He, like we've spent more time together this year than we have probably since high school. Yeah. And those types of conversations are just elevated conversations. And then me and you like hanging out and, and talking about this sort of creative space. Like, it's hard not to get excited. And I've already got so much shit going on for me anyway. Fuck, I generally think I want to be on it like... I, always, I was thinking the other day, like, when I'm 50, I want to be one of, like, the most well-known entrepreneurs in yes. Australia through helping the most people. 100%. I or, mean, the writing's, on, the writing's on the wall, you know? Like, I, I, I think you will be too. You've seen me at work now. I'm just bouncing around everywhere, keen to do, like, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Bro, I haven't felt like this in, like, years. Like I've yeah. always loved what I've done, but I'm excited about where we're going again. Where a lot of the probably couple, year and a half, I was, felt like I was always on a defensive and trying to protect everything. Now we're light, we're free, ready to grow. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's an exciting time, man. Like, and you can see it, you know, Quaid, fucking Adi, those boys, like T, like Tej, like yeah, because you're in the convos too. So yeah, know, even it's just, like just even like even grow. the boys from you know G up and stuff. Like you've got a, you've got like a lot of you've got a lot of knowledge and. Just get it, get shit done. Sort of mentality. You got a lot of connections. I, th I definitely think, bro. Like, I definitely think in the next couple of years, um, you, you'll, you'll definitely be up there for sure, for sure. I mean, like, it's, it's weird. It's weird that you're not sort of like, like already put up, like in, in a light where people. I don't even know, but like, where like you get those. What's that guy's name? Mark. Um, oh, not Mark. Fucking. Um, He's like one of the owners of the Roosters, does podcasts and shit. Oh, my Boris. Yeah. Like, oh, bro, uh, he sold a business for like five hundred million. He's I like, know that. I know that. But like, like you know, he does these things where he gets entrepreneurs and talks to them and stuff like that. Like, that's mm. you know. I, yeah. I used to like I used to love that sort of business content, but bro, it's so saturated now. It's just like we've 100. we've talked about this before, and like I seen um Tom 
from Hello Sports. Like we said, they, they've got the model. Like two guys don't have to really rely on guests. They can sort of sit down and chop it up. And yeah, it's important. This is what this is what this kind of is, isn't it? Hundred percent. It's important, bro. Like, um, it's vibey as fuck too. You know what I mean? Like, it's vibey. It's like Oof. we can all we can all seesaw off each other. Like, it's like you go up, I go up. You go up, I go up. And it's just, you know what I mean? Rising like, tide raises all ships, man. Exactly. So, <laughs> but I I I just. I love seeing it. I love being around it. I'll, go, I'll, I'll tell you these creative ideas after. They're going to be sick. Because, you know, like, not, not throwing shade on anyone, but all podcast merch at the moment is quite similar. Like, it's just like... Yeah, I mean... I mean, I get it. Like, put yeah. your logo on a hoodie or, or a tee. But I think between me and you, and we put our brains together, and you, you're artistic, I can get it done. I yeah. think we can come up with some really cool ideas, bro. Oh, fucking earth. I think... Yeah, as I, and as, as I was saying to you, it's like... It's like when, you know, it's cool. It's it's cool to have, uh, but it's just making sure that it's not like, yeah, as you said, it's such a saturated market. Even even within the company, like even with you with YKTR, like you've you've got so many like, oh, you know, options. But I I think, who knows, bro? Like, it is what it is. <laughs> so yeah. I'm just I'm like I don't like to, I don't like to put anything. The way I look at it, everything now, right, is like. If I'm going to be a part of something, I'll give it 100%. And uh, I, I definitely think you and I could create some fucking, some like, you know, Yeezy before the shoes and stuff came out. Mm. You know, like I see ghosts and shit like that. Like mm. the, not that type of vibe. Uh, sorry, not that type of merch, but to like that the type of energy that, that those collections let out, you know? Yeah. Because that'd be cool. Because like my, my favourite thing about business is marketing and having like these little moments and um, had a couple of the Wallaby boys in yesterday and I was just showing them like what we'd be doing and the thought process behind um, all arty stuff coming in the future, cheese stuff coming in the future, just those like little moments that go, oh, that's, that's clever. Mm. So yeah, in terms of creativity, I don't think we're going to be short of anything. It's just going to be about execution. Hundred. Just want to make noise, eh, bro? Make noise, make impact. Yeah, yeah, and it's uh, in a good way, not like not cancelled way. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's hard, man. It's it's a hard space, you know. Like you know, we posted something yesterday and started fucking. Everyone's just so everyone's very uh, easy to you know, just so easy to like trigger. Mm. You know what I mean? It's a triggered society. It's crazy, eh? Mm. It's really like... It's Hard thing is, bro, you just don't know what they're going through. So it's like, I don't know. Yeah. Well, okay. It, it, could, a, be, it, could, be, it could be a conversation that goes on forever. You know, my thing is this, right? I said, I said this, like my mate messaged me yesterday. She goes, hey, like, this is a one-way friendship. Like, I never hear from you. You never answer my calls during the week. Blah, blah, blah. 4.30 in the morning, heard from this chick. Hey, listen, like, you know heard you're still in love with your ex on this podcast, blah, blah, blah. Like <laughs> all these things. Like, and, and, and like my thing now, bro, is like, I genuinely, I, I just, I said to my mate, straight, I said to my friend straight away, listen, like it's nothing against you. I'm just on my own mission right now. And I just don't have time for any of this shit right now. Like what you're talking about. I don't like, it's not, I don't even want to talk about it. Like it's yeah, just it's wasted. It's just wasted energy. energy, bro. Yeah, like I just bro. don't, I don't engage with it anymore. Like I'm just like, stop. Mm. Gay, you know, <laughs> respectfully, mm. you know, like I just don't want to talk about that sort of stuff. Like I just, I, I, I I'm, I'm just on a, I'm on a different wavelength and, and I want to be everyone around me to be on that same wavelength. So the, even with my mate, bro, like calling me up, it's like, yo man, I'm like, Oh, what's wrong, bro? You know, you, you, you actually used to tell me this all the time. Like, like I just can't be around that energy anymore, bro. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? I'm like, listen, if you, if you can talk to me about it once, but if you're not making the changes, <laughs> then fuck off. You know what I mean? And I didn't realize it until I changed my mindset and everyone else, because <laughs> it's, it's real, bro. It's right. real. Like, if you, can, if you continually continue talking about the same shit, about the same, oh, man, I did this, I did that, I've got no money, I've blah 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 it's it, it 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 really is draining bro so now i just cut i've cut out everyone in my life like i literally don't f hang out really much with anyone except for my mates on the weekend that have the same 
mindset. Yeah, hundred percent. If I catch up, it's like <laughs> those it's, times used to come through and just ask the exact same questions. Like even birthday dinners fuck. and shit, bro. People's expectations of others should be nil mm. because we're like it's the quickest way to get let down, bro. If you put your expectations of yourself, on I've got no else, expectations on nobody. Yeah, if you calm, you calm. If you don't, bro, no, too exactly. Old to be caring about that. Hundred. Oh yeah, fucking. I oh, man, I'm 31. Last thing I want to. Last thing I want to do is come to your your thirty second birthday. You know what I mean? For example, like mm. it's just it's you can't have expectations on others. That's the best advice I can give to anyone. And when you do that, you can never get hurt. And I think uh, the best part is is like just super zone it on yourself, and then your company just sort of attracts hundred percent. Like if you're always trying to fit in places, you can't really find your place. Yeah. Just focus on yourself. And as you get older, you get less friends, and it's yeah. good. You want less friends. Yeah. You don't want to. I know you know a lot of people like network wise, but like how yeah. many of those dudes you actually going to hang out with? I don't really hang out with, like I hang out with uh, probably I'd say there's 10 guys that I hang out with consistently. Um, and none of us talk during the week. Mm. We don't need like, you know what I mean? So I feel like I think a lot of uh, people in today's society as well have expectations on others when, you know, potentially they don't, have much going on in their lives you know mm. not not disrespectfully but i just i couldn't imagine like am, is it weird for me to not to have expect not have expectations on others like if if you call me up if it's if it's like you're depressed or whatever give me a message give me a, like you know but fucking get after it mm. like wake up get after it you know yeah my, like oh it's just the way i was raised i was kind of like always, get after it yeah like kind of solution based like i used to when I was a complaint, complain as a kid, mum and dad just go, well, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> and sometimes you just want someone to sort of cry on, but it's set me up good for later in life. But it's also like, same thing, like I pass that expectation on to you, like mm. sometimes, or anyone, like they'll come in and say something and sometimes they just want someone to talk to. So sort of understanding like the difference. Um, I see yeah. this thing on Instagram and I see it in relationships is like um, couples go, do you want me to listen or are we going to try and figure out a solution before yeah. they get into a thing? I think oh, that's a good thing. 100%, 100%. And uh, oh man, it's it's honestly like a weight off your shoulders and I'm not judging anyone. Like if you want to get in contact with your mates, by all means, like if my any of my mates message me or or they're like, yo, I need to talk to you. Don't beat around the bush. Don't, I'm not going to read your fucking mind. Yeah, like if you want me to help you or you want to talk to someone about some deep shit, mm. message me and say, I need to talk to you. I'll call you straight away. But if you, oh man, I don't hear from you. I don't do this. Do <laughs> Bro, I've got two kids. I'm 31 years old. Last thing on my mind is fucking going for a Bondi to Bronte with you. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, And this is just in general, bro. Like once you do that, it frees your mind, frees like frees everything. Yeah, and the other side of that, like I've been like that for the past couple of years, but then I'm starting to swing back the other way, where I'm making a conscious effort to like even have phone calls with people, or because like, I'm very. Yeah, I still do that. I still do that, but I mean, just don't get upset when people don't abide by your expectations. Because mm. I didn't tell you what I, I didn't tell you I was going to go f give you a call. You know, I didn't tell you I was going to answer. If I don't answer. It's because I've got my own shit going on. Yeah. Indeed. You know, so if it's important, I'm there. If it's not, and a lot of my friends know that too. When shit hits the fan, like I'm always there for every, anyone. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, talk us through the shirt. The great silk shirt. My friend, you're in for a treat. Is so, it coming back? I mean, silk's never actually been around apart from bedtime. But I thought to myself, hmm, I'm a pioneer of, of fashion. You know what I mean? Everyone knows me for fashion. Now, a couple Didn't of people, but you know what I mean? <laughs> it's not neither it's neither here nor there. Silk Do you know what? For like um if you go from actual budget to, to actual budget to what you wear, you actually dress really well. I'm trying to fucking that's what I'm trying to Sorry, go That's back what I'm trying to get across the, to the world, man. It's like shit, follow me on a budget. <laughs> so, anyways, my mate how the how the famous silk shirt got about right was my mate hit me up he bought the silk shirt off asos this one and he goes shit it's way too big do you want to wear it and i was like yeah yeah cool 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 and i went up to the goldie and um i put it on around my two goldie mates mg and alex shout out to the boys mg and ag 
and AG, him and I just started to break bread recently. So I seen him, you know, but you can tell people's looks on their face. Yeah. He wasn't feeling it. No, nah, he goes like this. Double, double took and then sort of jogged into like MG's room. And I was like, nah, he's talking shit about me. <laughs> he's talking shit about me here. So anyways, he comes down and then, and then I was like, um, what do you reckon, boys? And then MG just goes, MG's another one, calls a spade a spade. He goes, mate, I'm just going to be honest with you. Keep that shit in Sydney, yeah? <laughs> and I don't that's think even I, anyone in Sydney would rock that. I mean, that's when I rose to the, the, the occasion, to the challenge. I'm like, am I going to be the one who brings silk back into the game? <laughs> Have you ever, you, when was the last time you seen someone wear silk apart from like Five. Prince, the, the, prince, the queen? In, in high school with boxes. <laughs> Do you used to always wear boxes underneath your shorts or no? Was it? Oh, uh, nah. Nah, nah, nah. Fire hanging out the top. Boom. Nah. Nah, 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 nah. I was always like a... Uh, a private school kid. <laughs> <laughs> I was with those, with those, um, those undies. Would you rock... I, I, like, I'm, I'm considering about wearing this out on Saturday to Rick Shaw's when you, me and Big Q are having a few <laughs> apple martinis. Are you coming? I'm flying oh, up no, Saturday morning. You got, um, you got your event on, don't you? Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna go to that. I'll probably go there. Maybe ha meet up with them later. But you know, a few oysters with me, you, Big Q, into the pav. Do you gonna be funny if uh, more people knew you than Quaid? <laughs> yeah, let's be honest. It's you know, it's Big it's a Q. Chance, bro. It's a chance. Nah, nah, nah. It's Big Q, man. <laughs> Everyone knows Big Q. That's what you're saying off air. I definitely was not saying that. You Come on, man. That. Come on. Let's be real here. <laughs> but yeah, bro. So silk, man. Silk is. Silk is the new denim. Mm. It's timeless. Doesn't age. Would and you get push. home, go straight to bed. <laughs> Have you ever had sex on silk? I don't like silk sheets. Eh? I don't just really. No, nah, I'm more of a 500 three count Egyptian cotton. No, nah, you'd be a thousand. Thousand. A thousand high? Yeah, a thousand. Oh, yeah. That's trying to be vibe. <laughs> Five hundred is very low. That's you're like sleeping on rash. Yeah, you're sleeping on sandpaper. Uh, uh. Yeah, so bro, Normie used to have the ugliest sheets, man. Like yeah, the mix, mix and match pillowcases. Yeah, yeah. like that stuff's in it. And even like his coat hangers were all just like all over the shop. He's very sufficient though, Normie. What do you mean? Like he, like washing wise, like oh, yeah, he's good his at his process. He's good at that stuff, but like yeah, I he's a good man, Normie. <laughs> <laughs> he oh, means well Bro he's down in the dumps At the moment He's like um, Over in London It's been like two months of rain yeah, I just, He said he wakes up Every morning Looks out And just Surely let up In the islands In the islands actually I'll tell you um, In the islands Rain's actually considered a, Like a blessing Is it actually? Yeah it is In the islands Of course Why? Well I mean Rain helps things grow You know mm. When it rains it pours <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we got to get to the most important part The art of A new segment that I wanted to introduce to the podcast Because this is important It's important to give Education Educational topics to the people Okay And my number one thing I like talking about dating I like talking about love I like talking about lust I like talking about Monogamy, <laughs> if that's a word. <laughs> yeah, that's a word. Oh. Oh. What's mono What's monogamy mean to you? You just, you just, you just with one person, isn't it? Is that, is that, that the meaning, bro? It is a eh? monogamy. Monogamy. You just loyal to one person. Yeah. Can you look that up, please, chat? <laughs> <laughs> so monogamy, right? Um, you know, as as you know, I've been down in the dumps, um, my whole life. <laughs> Uh, I've been down in the dumps and I don't want to get in too deep, but, you know, I wasn't really for a relationship. I was talking this and talking that, but something inside of me has come around, man. Do you know what it is? Can I just jump in here? Bro, it's KP killing it in the NRL after he's got a missus. His footy's just gone like, whew. Yeah, bro. That's it, man. That's yeah. one of the reasons, honestly. I, I looked at one of KP's, um, uh, what do we call it again? Um, what are they called? Uh when you swipe in the carousels, phone. Carousels, carousels. Carousels, yeah. The art of carousels. And <laughs> and he had like, yeah, he had Mumsy there. And I was like, sometimes all it takes is 
you know, one kiss. <laughs> Best song ever written. <laughs> but I'll go back to this, right? One kiss is all it takes. It never really... <laughs> I never really thought I knew what Dua Lipa was talking about all this time <laughs> until now, until today. Oh. But, oh man, <laughs> <laughs> I stumbled, I stumbled across this, like this reel <laughs> and I was like, fuck that guy. Man. I was just looking at these couples, man. And I'm like, fuck man, these cunts have got today. Who, who's your couple crush? My couple crush. That's like, actually a really good question. Not, not even like looks wise. Or Tom anything. and Eddie. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably. Oh, my couple crush. Do you know, Who do I fuck do with? Do you want me to go first? Yeah. Uh, Fisher and Chloe Fisher. Poor Fisher. Oh, yeah. That's uh, a great shout. Yeah, and I know they're going through like a bit of like trying to have babies and they're documenting that. But that life looks cool. It, um, and yeah, it looks, it looks amazing, bro. And they, and they just... They look so happy. <laughs> They're just rat bags, you know, like. Yeah. And then I, I think like, I think you can definitely see that she was a ride or die back in the day. You know what I mean? Because mm. oh, they've been together for. Donkers, ever. yeah. yeah. Uh, my crush, bro. That's, a, you've got me there because uh, I've never really looked at a couple from that, like that type of. You don't ever look at relationships and go, oh, like that's cool. Like I look at relationships and I go. I wonder if they're into threesomes. No. Nah. Um, I look at relationships like, okay, you know, I, I, I try and see like the magic in it, but I I have seen one, my friends, uh, but it's hard to say. Who, who would you... Just like people that we know? I like... I like I really like Taika Waititi and... Um, Rita Ora. Rita Ora. Yeah, they look happy. They do look happy. And I feel like... Obviously, they're both successful, but I feel like they're always supporting each other, which is like nice. Yeah, and I feel like, you know, Bro, do they live be in, yourself. Do they live in Bondi? Yeah, they they train at Beach Fit. Yeah, because um, I always see their posts and stuff and they're around, but I've never crossed paths with them. Yeah, me and him were having a coffee the other day and we were talking about <laughs> Thor 5. Nah. <laughs> um, yeah, no, they train at, at Beach Fit. Um, but yeah, it... I've changed my 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 outlook on relationships now, mm. and it's out there, bro. It's out there. So, are you putting yourself back on the market? I'm not putting myself. I, I never left the market, nor did I. Put, am I putting myself back on? It's more so. Where do I fit in the market? Where do you think you fit? Um, I think I fit in. I don't want you to clip that up. Actually, I was going to say something funny, but uh, <laughs> you'll clip it up just to make make it look like I wasn't saying this whole thing. I just said that one thing. But <laughs> I'm I I'm I am I'm not looking for a relationship. I think I read one of the comments. It's definitely like you, you don't look you attract. Um, and you know I've been I've been talking to someone <laughs> for a couple of weeks now, <laughs> and you know she's got me thinking. Mm. I might fuck around. Mm. You know, where and she, see. Where's she from? She's from Melbourne. Oh, you mean from down there? No, no, different one. She's from she's from Melbourne. It's a different one. Jeez. She's a Victoria's Secret model, though. <laughs> so I don't know. You guys Google it. Do what you need to do. But I'm Jordan Simi, though. <laughs> you know, that's actually? the market I belong in. Tens, Would tens, you? and sevens. <laughs> Or twenty four seven. Yeah, you know what I mean. Would you date a girl with no followers? Um, I mean, I have dated girls with no followers. Or like, un, what? It, I can't like what. Okay, what I've got to I've got to say this. It's not my fault that hot chicks like me, Ice. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not my fault that beautiful women are attracted to me. What do you think it is? Like, because we always see this as like the Bermuda Triangle. Is like, where do the planes go? Or Back in yeah, the it's definitely up there with the Bermuda Triangle <laughs> and, you know, God, Jesus. Like, I'm not, not saying me, us and them, like the stories. I mean, like, where are these people from? You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like, it's well, like it's the H&S tech type shit. Yeah, it's one of the like life's unsolved mysteries, isn't it? I don't know, man. The, the only person that could probably sell, solve this is Sherlock Holmes <laughs> and Normie's girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. um, I would most likely, I don't know what it is, man. I think it comes down to charisma. 
you know mm. it's like manifest like you manifest like i'm the fucking bee's knees and and i'm i've i've dated i've dated i've dated like two hot chicks like i'm it's not like i'm not going around buddy it's not a consistent thing like mm. <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> but um i don't i don't know what it is man i don't know what it is i've just got i'm i'm charismatic you know that you've seen that where w- sorry it's ta- tangent where do you reckon the saying bees knees comes from that's a, such a random saying eh? bees don't have knees <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that what it is i mean bees don't have knees yeah they do don't they no they just got like little legs i mean does it really matter in the scheme uh, of things i just like wanna, in the bigger picture i just want to know where these words come from you know i'm you know i'm a word person you are a bit of a wordsmith um you know the saying piss paul you know that saying? It's, it's an adjective for you. <laughs> no, the saying actually comes from like back in the day, there was families that were so piss poor, like they'd have piss in the bucket and sell it to the leather makers to make the couch, like to stay in couches. Oh, really? And that's the only way that they could um, make money. So the saying, like, yeah, they're piss poor. Of course you know that saying. It's a bit weird. <laughs> what about piss weak? Piss weak dog. <laughs> Dog, such sort of feel lesbian in this <laughs> in the silk, eh? Would you would you rock the two piece, the top and bottom? I don't know if I'd rock the two piece. What about a pair of shorts? That'd be the giggle. I, I would rock leather pants and a leather, like you know, I'd do I'll do anything to fucking to just make you smile, man. <laughs> I would do. I I was looking up um, silks the other day. Yeah, like I could fuck around with silk, man, and bring it back in, like. I don't know. I, I think double just, silks. I think <laughs> I think it'd be niche, like double silks everywhere. Because you, you never really see cycles of like so you, you see a silk um, singlet on a girl, like a crop top style thing. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, like men wearing silk is it's a different gravy. It's like a, a bit of a wizard vibe, eh? Yeah, I feel like I'm open to 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 relationships again, man. Mm. I really am. Um, it's just it's it's. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Let's not rush into things, but let's just, let's put it out there. Put that energy out there. Hey, listen, I'm open. I'm open to meeting a shorty. I want to, you know, I'm open to it. I'm excited. Mm. But uh, you were going to ask me a question earlier. You brought it up. The art of a haka. <laughs> I was thinking about this the other day. The art of huckers, man. <laughs> no, here, here's a question. One for of the great novels. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a question: How many? Unless you're like full blown moldy and next and next podcast, can we sort this out? Because I feel like it slips and like <laughs> before you know it, it's touching my belly. <laughs> um, like I was, we done this hucker one time in the Gold Coast, bro, and it was only like three of us. Chicken is it should be a minimum number on on hookers. I think a minimum of, <laughs> minimum of five. Five, I think yeah, so five's too, a, bro. Five's, five's a nice number, yeah. With five, you can get the little triangle going. But we were at this um, 30th, and it was um, one of the boys' birthdays. And uh, I didn't know the dude, but he was a moldy dude. And he come up and he goes, bro, we, we're going to do a haka. And I was like, I had a quick glance of the room, bro. I was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, there's not, there's not many Kiwis yeah. there. You know what yeah, I mean? I, I was like, you. I'm looking around, and then I'm like, oh, so, yeah, sweet, sweet. What haka are we going to do? And he's like, oh, tika tonu. I don't know Tiko Tuna. Oh, oh, right. I actually don't know it. Yeah, I know, I know. I know. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. and I was like, oh, bro, I don't know Tiko Tuna. He goes, yeah, bro, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I was going, no, nah, no, nah, don't. He goes, no, nah, legit, you do. Why did the and breathers I, do that, eh? Yeah, just. Uh, and then, um, respectfully, I don't mind doing a haka for the right reasons, for occasions, and all that of sort course, of stuff. Of course, yeah. yeah. If you don't know a haka, you don't know a fucking haka. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> And then, um, and all the boys are from Kibra, too, which is basically. A mouldy school. Yeah. Um, to fight a quarter or Kibra. So I was like, and I was like, bro, legit, I don't know it. And he goes, oh, we'll just do come up to then. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sweet. And I was looking around, I was like, I surely got some numbers. And he's like, bro, let's go down the toilets and have a practice. <laughs> bro. Like, nah, gee. Like, well, everyone knows come up there. Just call it and we'll rock up. Went down to the toilets anyway. Beauty, three people. <laughs> I was just like, yeah. oh. and I was thinking about this last night. I was like, there needs to be a minimum of five. Unless you're... Unless there's a really good reason. If you want to huck on your own and, and you're proud, you go hard. Mm. But man, Cook Islander, man. Yeah, I think uh I think minimum of five. I've I've been an, involved in a hucker when my uncle passed away and there was two and a half of us. 
<laughs> Who's the half? I was this Asian kid I went to school with. Oh, he jumped in. Oh, I respect yeah. that. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. It was mad. Um, but I, I let it, bro. <laughs> I can't, and like, bro, I can't picture you leading a hooker for some reason. Eh? Respectfully, I hope my other uncles don't listen to this because, but like, you know, they were carrying him in R.I.P. And um, bro, my voice. I started to lose my voice real early in the hooker, oh. and I was like waiting for my uncle, my cousin to, to, to anchor me. You know what I mean? Holy cunt. My, my voice was like, <laughs> like ras oh. raspy as, and then, mm. but it was mad. It was mad though. Like it was, uh, yeah, but minimum of five, bro. And um, what I, what I, fuck, what I, what I find so annoying, bro, is like when I'm on a, when I'm in the piss mm. and, you know, you get a girl like, where, whereabouts are you from? I'm like, oh, I'm from NZ. Oh my God, can you do the hugger for me, please? And I'm like, <laughs> when? They're like, now. And I'm like, come on, man. You know, but I I, 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 I fucking love it, bro. I love it. Eh? It gives me goosebumps every time. Oh, it's mad. I, like, I, I've, I've led a hucker for King's College um, versus Auckland Grammar game. Yeah. When my cousin played. That was mad. That was mad. For another time, I was just thinking of it just then, is um, Tupo Sopoanga got married. Yeah. And he saw... He saw and Cookie, and <laughs> same thing, bro. So all the boys went up from Wellies. They were Maori dudes on Tika Tonu, like Jordi Kahu and that, bro. Thirty deep, like all boys couldn't even fit. Boys couldn't even get their arms going properly, mad. bro. Mad, yeah. Killed it. Everyone jumped in. Samoans jump up. Boom, boom, boom. Beauty Cook Islands. There's like four of us. It's like, bad. Oh, true. Two, and the, the two proud ones. No, like, no, nah, nah, we have to represent our culture, which like I get. Yeah, I yeah, like, yeah. Not after those two, man. Yeah. This, wait till the drums come out. And yeah, that's yeah. Our time to smack shine. the drums. Yeah. <laughs> and then Tackers was there, right? And he was trying to dance. Beauty split his pants. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> nah, tax no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love the hucker, bro. I mean, I love it, bro. I was like, I love how I love how strong the Maori culture is, eh? Like it's so like staunch. Um, all the today all back home like my my nephew like we're cook island and, and my mum's white um he's like in a bilingual like today all class because they all want to learn yeah all my all my family speak fluent maori wow. like they went to um i think they went to hatel petita yeah I know, yeah and um they they all speak fluent maori so then when i go go back like they all talk shit behind my back <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> Oh, nice to see you guys, man. I'll see you guys another six years. <laughs> nah, but but it's uh, it, only recently that I started to like sort of go fuck. Like I'd love to learn a lot more about my culture on both sides, you know, and like learn how to speak the language. Because there's nothing worse, bro, than going around like my Samoan cousins or Maori, and then they they're all speaking fluently, and and then they're laughing. And I'm just like, <laughs> I'm just like shit, man. It reminds me of footy, eh? like Tongans, bro. They were ruthless. I was like, bro, they will pay you out right to your face, backstab you, and Tongan, <laughs> and you can't do anything because I'll yeah. knock you out too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's Tongans, a scary Tongans place are to be, man. Tongans are ruthless. Yeah, hard. Mm. But um, yeah, yeah, bro. The hucker, the ha the okay. I got one. The Oh, we used to, me, me and Quaden, we used to play for Tudonga Wawai. Oh, really? Yeah, bro, yeah. yeah. No way. Because our team went up there, well, in like 15, 16, and we were playing for like Waikato, but staunch Māori, obviously, um, Tainui, all that sort of area. And we learned so much about the Māori culture, like through there. Yeah. Got that Player of the Year award from the Māori Queen one time. Oh, really? Yeah, 500 bucks. Was, bro, my ex- bro, um, 500 back in the day. Whew, oh. 500 now. Bought you a patch. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I remember- <laughs> <laughs> bro, oh, I remember shit. the fuck. This was the the best, bro. This was the bet, the best. Like, so I just got out of NZ. <laughs> I just got out of NZ, bro. And then, um, and uh, I was in Perth, and I met this girl, bro. And she was like, probably dead set, one of the most beautiful girls I've ever seen. Mm. Uh, half Dutch, half Maldi. Oh, that's a combo. She had green yeah. eyes. Her brother had green eyes. Bro, green eye Maldis. Yeah, we kill it. <laughs> <laughs> and um so anyways up there with the best though eh? yeah so anyways I, i'm like i've got a crush on the shorty at school right mm. and um you know um so i go and talk to her and i'm like hey like nice to meet you. and she's like 
not like Brad Pitt like that. <laughs> sorry about that. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> sorry, I didn't have the husk, but <laughs> I go, yo, like, yeah. I'm like, hey, how are you? She goes, um, she's like, oh, hey, like, what's up? <laughs> she had a full, like, moldy, she was like a moldy chick, yeah. like, but hard out. And I was like, oh, shit, like, whereabouts are you from? And um, uh, she's from Kodo. Oh, bro, Kodo, <laughs> Kodo's rough, bro. And, yeah. bro, like, she was, she was, like, hearty ass, right? And then, so anyways, her and I fall in love. Cinderella, like, Romeo and Juliet shit. Mm. And we, we, I go over to her, um, her dad, her, to meet her dad, bro. Fucking old patch member, like, old oh, mongrel mob yeah. member, but he's, he was got to be one of the scariest men I've ever met. Eh? <laughs> super, you know, they're super chilled ones, yeah. but like you can they, see. They, they throw you off with the look, but they're really nice. But then if they bro, switch, they so switch. so scary, bro. And then like one of her family had a barbecue eh? and then all of her cousins came over and they were fresh women did too. All um, mongrel mob members that are like, but they still had that dog in them. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I fucking mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, when they got on the piss, bro, they were, it was the scariest thing, eh? Yeah. I was just sitting there because I went to King, so I was like, nah, man. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, they're like, I reckon you would have tried to bung on the chair too when they're hanging around. I nah. Can see, I can see you doing that. Like, oh, what are you up to, Will? Bro, bro, I was speaking, like, nah, bro, nah, 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 nah. Speaking of Kawado, bro, my first game of, like, I started playing, like, men's when I was, like, 13. No, you didn't. I swear to God. I Holy mean, cunt, what? Yeah, and my first game was against Kawado. You did, you would have had a men, man's body, though. <laughs> I then. was that young as, but, like, I was, I was a good kid, like, good player as a kid. Um, like I was like playing like junior reps in New Zealand for all that. Oh, so yeah. I, well, fuck. Uh, you know what I forget, bro? Like because of like your athlete, athleticism now, <laughs> I don't like, I forget that you used to play like international footy and like NRL and stuff because of how you move now. Yeah, slow as fuck. Oh, bro. Bro, but like honestly, my first game was against Colorado and um, like I'm 14 and they run out, bro, like proper like dog faces, uh, dog on, on yeah, their, tatty, on their yeah, yeah. tats on their cheeks. Mm. And like they, they were good. Like they just played hard. Um, blah blah blah, but one of my mates Lee Lee Manu he <laughs> ran and stepped, bro, and the dude missed him and just kicked him like proper, proper Arasanya kicked him, eh? <laughs> like just goes bang and then Lee like trips up, and then Lee's mum comes home, she's like, "Fuck you, you done this?" And he just like, starts shouting at her. I'm just out there going, <laughs> oh. "Oh, fuck, bro!" Shout, honestly, shout out Dolf Manu. It's it's uh, some of the scariest games. Like when I went back recently, one of the boys go, "Oh, do you want to come play against uh, Otara?" Oh, no, no. He goes, do you want to come play a game of league? And I was like, yeah, sweet as. And I was playing for, I think, Ponsonby or... Ponies? Oh, no, that's league. Uh... No, yeah, league, league, league. Oh, no, Ponies is the union side. Oh, oh, I can't remember. But anyways, I was like, yeah, sweet, I'll come play. Anyways, like, we're balls deep by now. Like, there's no turning back. I go, oh, who are we playing? He goes, oh, Otara. <laughs> and I was like... Pull the hemi, bro. Damn, man. You got me. And so anyways, he's like, I'm like, where is it? Our home game? He goes, no, 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 their home game. I was like, oh, fuck. So, and I used to, my family all live in Otara and Odahu and Mangadin. So anyways, we rock out there. Family comes down. There was like heaps of like King Cobras there. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, bro. And it was like, like one of the scariest games I've ever played. Because yeah, yeah. like, you know, you, you're just on edge, you, eh? if you're too flashy, then you can hit like getting a, a yeah. yeah you're getting like elbows to the back of the head <laughs> and then when we left but when we left there I was like I was like fuck I'm scared as I was like get me out of here man yeah. Auckland's different eh? it's like I know but I had he I had heaps of I had see the thing is like heaps of my cousins are in, like uh, in Mongrel Mob and Black Power and because I like a lot of my family live in Waioku as well yeah have you been to Waioku no shout out to Waioku man where where is that. It's one of the great, great small towns. Like, do is you know it, where Pukekohe is? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like literally the town over. So they've got like By, um, the Kentish Pocono, and whatnot. Where the ice creams are. Uh, like down on the way to Waikato. Like down. No, no, no. It's up like north, north. Going north, I'm pretty sure. What did yeah. you say? Uh, Waiuku. Oh. So it's just like about an hour out from Rainbow's End. Down? Up. Up, up. Are you sure? Pretty sure, yeah. Mm. Pretty sure. I think it's like. Hey, can you check that? Check that up. Check. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jamie too. No, no, I'm saying yeah. chat. Like you know, they so they ask the chat. Oh yeah. Uh, Fire Rainbow's ends was. Did you ever get to go? Um. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here and there, eh? Nothing crazy, but when you drive past it now, eh? It's like, I've, I've, I haven't I haven't been back. I, I'm 
I'm actually keen. I might go back to Queenstown uh, this month, actually. <laughs> what do you mean back to? You're not from there. Oh, I used to live there, yeah. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. How long? Fern Hill, probably about two and a half years. <laughs> on and off, on and off. <laughs> Is Fern Hill a suburb there? Like, I, I, I don't think you understand, like, the... the, the if you, if you, Bro, how if, old are you, like, how old are you actually? You've lived so many lives. If I could, if I could give you the, the thing of me even just sitting in this couch, you'd shake my hand, like, how I got here. Like I wasn't spoon fed like you. No. <laughs> <laughs> like if I actually, if you actually seen how I got mm. here sitting in this seat, you know, like <laughs> you would actually go, holy cunt, like, like, and I'm not saying no one else has gone through it, but like. Yeah, you're the only bloke going through stuff. Like, I mean, have you ever walked from North to South Island? <laughs> With only hopes and dreams? Yeah. <laughs> I have. Dollar in a dream. I have. But uh, I've got one. Art, the art of... Uh, Breakfast Riz. What do you mean by breakfast Riz? So, there's nothing apparently more sexier than someone who can cook a nice breakfast. Oh, really? Well, that's what they say. Or well, that's just pillow talk. I don't know, but <laughs> like, that's, just, that's just them just trying to stay over a bit longer. <laughs> yeah, well, you were telling me about uh, the heart of one night stands. <laughs> talk me through that. No, it was one of the questions we got. What is one stand etiquette? The one night stand etiquette. The one night stand etiquette. Uh, I've had one. What's, what's well, the I've, had, <laughs> I've had one or two in my life. This week or like? I honestly couldn't tell you the last time I had sex. Mm. And I don't mean to be personal right now, but it's been, it's been hard, man. <laughs> it's been hard. You know what I mean? But that's what we do as men, man. We we we, do, we put put our shades on. We keep moving. You know what I mean, chat. <laughs> it's a chat. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> Holy cunt! The art of a one night stand. The art okay. of the one night stand. I've, like obviously, you know, we've all had a few one night stands in our time. And what's it like? <laughs> what sex or? <laughs> it's it's okay. You'd like it. Uh, <laughs> it's. I think, like you tell me. Cause I don't, I don't actually, I, I genuinely don't have one night stands. Mm. What about back in the day? I, I think what they're just sort of asking is like, how do you get out of it? You just gotta be respectful, eh? Yeah, I think respectful, respectful is key. Mm. Respectful is key and respectful is keen because maybe, just maybe you got you guys might rekindle. Is no, one, I just think it's, a, it's just it nice one, to be nice. If you stay over the night, is that still like one night stand or is one night stand in and out? I one think night one night stands sleep. one stay a night, yeah. stay the night. I it's, mean, I like I drop like well, when I when when I my car was functional, you know, like if I had a one night stand. This was back in the day too. I haven't had a car for about three years. We we'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I would drive them home, you know. Yeah. I just think. Is that us? I eh? drop you off on the way home. Just to... yeah, I drive them home or I'm. But I I see. I don't like one night stands. I like to to I like them to hang around. Mm. You know. Maybe a bit of lunch. No. Like if it's a Sunday and you're hungover, you're like, fuck, I just want to chill, watch a movie. I think it all comes down to what they look like as well. Mm. Like men and female, like men and women. Like if you're like, fuck, I regret that as a female, you know? Yeah, they're out straight away, eh? Me, I'm saying this is male and female. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like. I remember, I, I remember, I had a one night stand, and this chick dropped me off, and I thought, "Hey, yo, can you pull into McDonald's on the way home?" <laughs> That's etiquette, you know what I mean? Yeah. A couple of hash browns. Phone, my phone's dead, so I can't pay for that shit. <laughs> but it's not about one night stands; it's about the connection. You mm. know what I'm saying? Nothing, but maybe if they stay over, bro, I whip up a little bacon and eggs. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Just say, "Hey, thanks for last night. Apologies too for the carry on." <laughs> All right, I got some questions here. Sorry, we still going. Do you usually <laughs> bring your dog into the podcast? Are you usually unprofessional? <laughs> oh, we're about to sign a contract for the art of nothing. The art of contracts. The art of contracts. Yeah. Little negotiation. <laughs> what do you think you're worth? It's not what I think I'm worth. It's what I think the business is worth. So we're going business versus you. Business, not not. I'm talking about the art of nothing business. <laughs> oh, okay. So separate entity. 
It always is. I'm, 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 I don't have any emotional connection to anything. <laughs> yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Mello, look at me. <laughs> Melly. Um, all right. We're getting into questions. Yeah, questions are coming through. Shout out to everyone who's sort of thrown us a question. <laughs> Someone wrote the art off. Oh, did you? Were you reading these questions? No, not at all. Oh. Because one I said, what is the art of peace and tranquility and how do we find it? Oh, that's a good question. Agree. The art of peace and tranquility. You go first. Um, I, was, I saw a really cool quote that peace is the new rich the other day. Uh, I think that's it. Oh, yes. Do you know what? Do you know what? Like, um, I told you that. No, you didn't. I always used to say, man, <laughs> just be chill. Yeah. Put a peace in the wall. It's the new rich. Yeah. I don't know, man. We're still, I'm still trying to find it. Like, what is peace? I think peace, this is my belief of peace, right? Is keeping your circle small and making sure that you tick the most important boxes in your life every day. What's your boxes? My kids, talking to my kids. Um, being back in my kids' life now, which is fucking amazing. Um, making sure I stick to what I say I'm going to do and not lying to people. <laughs> I used to tell a lot of white lies. Oh, fucking Just because so, I didn't like confrontation. Yeah. But now I don't care. I, I, I tell it how it is, even if I like shoot myself in the foot. Mm. I just, I think, uh, and just being kind to people, bro. I'm the type of guy, like I just, I treat the janitor the same I treat the CEO, you know? You stole that quote too. So I'm not stealing, I'm just, I'm just repurposing. Uh, you know what I mean, though. I got you. Don't you feel peace and like I don't. I don't, and having when you when you don't have any expectations of anyone or anything, and uh, only within yourself, then that's when you find peace. Mm. Or after you bust I'm, a nut. Nah. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of my version of peace. I don't know if I've found one yet. Because I'm always like. Fuck, let's do this, let's do that. I, I, don't, want, I, don't I think, want to build this. I think that's peace, though. I, I do think that's peace in its own way. Yeah, who knows? Eastern Suburbs Best Kept Secrets. This girl, her name's... Uh, nah. <laughs> um, Can I give you a couple of food ones? You know where course, we're going. We'll go yeah. in with this one. <clears throat> so there's North Bondi, there's a, obviously where Raw Bar is. Everyone goes to Depot. The locals play is where... Harry's. Harry's, cross yeah. the road. And what do you order? I order the the, the lobster omelette. Prawn omelette. The prawn omelette. If you're ever in North Bondi and you want probably the best breakfast, it'd be up there, eh? It'd be That's my a great shout. That is a great shout. It'd be in my top three brekkies of all time. The I'll prawn f- omelette is... It sounds weird. It sounds fucking disgusting. For brekkie, but prawn omelette from Harry's in North Bondi. Don't go to Depot. Go to Depot if you want. Get the, get the Coconut pancakes for a laugh. Yeah, a bit mushy. You'll go out. You'll, you'll go out with fucking bloated. Yeah, across the road, Harry's prawn pancake. Put plenty of the locals onto it. Oh my days! Game changer. Yeah, you put me onto it. Actually, I, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna dabble, and every time I go there, <laughs> straight on that and the oak cat. But uh, yeah, best kept secret. <clears throat> what do you think's fake about the acai bowls? From where the acai bowl shop next to fucking oh D bowls, D bowls. Yeah, that's good. I mean, that specific one. Is there an emotional attachment to that? Or I mean, yeah, my ex goes there all the time. <laughs> so just trying to hang out the front. I actually, way. I actually purchased the business. No, <laughs> I would too. Oh, and another little sneaky one is there's a Italian joint up in up North Bondi on the hill called Dina Poli. And this sounds like rank again. I'm just going to throw you on some food game here. They've got this broccoli pasta. Sounds yuck. Trust me, it sounds yuck. And I thought this too. Favorite pasta really? in Bondi. Better, better than any pasta at Toddy's or Dorazio yeah. Di Napoli. Can we go to... Go. Can we go to... Um, Toddy's? No. This is an, another that I've just found, right? Ravisi's menu. Mm, the food was fucking good. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Yeah. The, the, the pasta that I had was was up there with some of the best pasta I've ever had. They had um, a sneaky little thing on the menu. Fish fingers sandwich. Hmm. Nah. 
I mean, I'm not five anymore, man. <laughs> that's, that's those the, are long gone. <laughs> that's the that's the start of it. I, I, I uh, see those those little like, fish fingers used to remind me, remind me of like how many times can you eat fish fingers a day? Oh, gross! But, uh, what are your sauce on it? I just go tomato sauce with a little bit of mayo. Yeah, in the sandwich. Yeah, just to like keep it cool, man. Um, yeah, that secret spots in Bondi, man. Like, it's not yeah. You know what weird thing about Bondi is? Like, um, it's boring, but it's so much fun. <laughs> the, hey, nah, every, uh, it's like I've lived there long enough. It just goes in cycles. Like people come in, they get really excited, and they're out of Bondi in about a year. And like obviously rent and stuff's like pretty expensive, but I think a lot of people front in Bondi. I love Bondi. The best, the best people in Bondi are the people that actually grew up there. Like, cause they're oh, hundred percent. Like all the blowins, myself included. When you first get there, you just like Fuck, get this in your face. Yeah, I oh, know. I mean, I'm not really like that. Yes, you are. Name one time. Your whole life. No. <laughs> I introduced you to Bondi. Remember when you used to give me shit, like for not coming out west. When was the last time you that went out west? That wasn't me. That was not me. No, no, no. You used to be like, oh, too, too good to come visit us out in the first office. When was the last time you went out <laughs> west? Tell me. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> yeah, so we need, shout out Parramatta, best food joints in the comp. No, uh, I mean, I mean the Lebanese food out there is fucking untamed, uninterrupted. Yeah, but I mean, I haven't like, I mean, I haven't really had any Italian or anything out there. When I go out there, I just it's just shisha and and um, sour sour candy. <laughs> what's what's that? all uh, that stuff? Yeah. Normie, normie to what's that? Nara Lounge. Yeah, the guy. Oh, oh, you just park it. But I just park at the BP, bruh. Sweet, sweet. Um, oh, does anyone want anything from Normie? We go, yeah, bruh, just get some Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, trust me. <laughs> Picking up girls as someone with status, clout, or a business. Uh, but I honestly We're probably different here. Say that again Say that again Picking up a girl As someone who's got Status clout or business I'd like That's I'm not, got it Yeah So say you've got it Like Might be just be An interesting question He might have He's got a little bit of Status this dude Yeah right I don't think I've got Status or clout I run a business And some people know it But I wouldn't Get around like I'm famous uh, Yeah You're the opposite yeah, I, I, I like to manifest things though, because you've you've got to believe it to see it. You know, mm. you got to you got to believe it. You have to. I mean, I don't treat people like I'm fucking this mad, like, like. But I just in my yeah, you don't belittle, heart, you don't belittle like, people, but no, I don't belittle people or anything. Like I just, I've always thought that, bro. Like I just, I've wanted to. Like a couple of days ago, I was like, I'm probably going to become a millionaire in the next two three months. <laughs> How I don't know. <laughs> Am I going to do it? Yes. That's my mind frame, bro. <laughs> you know, so it's you, not even about who's who's got status as well. Like, I literally will look at an opportunity, whether it be talking to a female, talking to a maid or like, and I engage in it mentally before I even, like, I manifest it. Like, I don't feel like you're very good at manifesting. I'm the best. I feel like I'm better than you at manifesting. No. <laughs> Trust me, you're not. You just got autism. <laughs> what are you saying? You that? have autism. What are you saying, that? bro? You, like, I'm not attacking you or anything. Like, we call a spade a spade here, you and I. But you stole that from Theo No, it's not. No, no, it's not. Well, like, I mean, did he open my eyes to what potentially we could <laughs> the gold, the golden goose that we're sitting on? <laughs> you have autism. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're saying the other day that um, your body's Starting to reject the bipolar p- pills, it's found a loophole. <laughs> it's <laughs> possible that it has, man, because I've been feeling real giddy lately. Yeah, you've been bouncy, eh? Ah, oh, man, life is good, bro. Life is good when the bank account's happy, the the ex missus is happy, the kids are happy. Life mm. is just so good, bro. And I just usually I'd go, hey, where, where's my box of spanners, man? <laughs> Let me chuck some in here. But I've I've been keeping, I've been keeping <laughs> on this nice track, man. Have I almost derailed? A few times. For, for sure I have, but different gravy. You, yeah, you used to be that guy that ride the bike, but he'd put his own stick in the front wheel. Yeah. 
I mean, just yeah, shoot, shoot myself in the foot. No more, man. That's and no then more. blame the person that sold you the gun. He, uh, nah. He calling? He's no, like, no, someone's calling me. Um, yeah. Sorry, what were we talking about? Oh, getting picking up someone with status, or you've got status? No, nah, we've passed that. Um, how your body's rejecting the pills? Oh yeah. I uh, I mean, maybe I'm just playing the character. <laughs> <laughs> I could have told you that. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, Apple doesn't bother. <laughs> Fuck. Please give it a rest. Don't, don't try. Me, don't come. try and speak on behalf. <laughs> That's what you're about to say. This is called the art of nothing, not stating the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nah, my my body's not rejected. Honestly, ever since I've started taking these bipolar tablets and like mood stabilizers, uh, it's turned me into. Um, a consistent human being. Mm. <laughs> and it's amazing, bro. Does it clash with steroids? <laughs> I'm not on fucking steroids, mate. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I'll, show, I'll like it's I'm not on steroids, I'll show you. Like, <laughs> like, did, did you bring back the white singlet? Nah. Who who'd you steal that off? The white singlet? Yeah, I feel like you're one of the first to <laughs> Yeah, I mean I've always just like, I mean, the first person actually in our group was the skit. <laughs> oh no, you the Christmas that? party. Yeah. Uh, Zanos, Zanos Zane, used Zane, to yeah. used to wife beat it and live by it. Yeah. <laughs> Zane uh, was yeah, I remember Zane being the, first. the OG wife hitter, <laughs> not physically, <laughs> sexually. Uh, send me next rumble. Say that again. When's your next rumble? Uh. I'm not even thinking about that at the moment, bro. Like, I, I think um, I've put every, I'm putting all my eggs in one basket with art, and and it's just, I mean, I, I'm training, I'm training right now, and I'll fight most likely at the end of the year. Like, I want to fight a big NRL name. Like, that's it. Do you like, know? That's where I'm at. That's what, and I'm not getting paid. Like, I'm getting like it's going to be a big fight. Okay. That's all I can say. Mm. It's bro cycle going to be a December. There's going to be an NRL card. Holy cunt. Oh, bro, what are you doing with the um, UFC? Oh, the UFC. So... Can you get... If you go, so you've got a ticket? Pause. Please. <laughs> don't. No, but the, bro, what people don't understand is that it's fucking hard to get a free ticket to the UFC. Like, it's actually the hardest... Like... Prestige it, Sydney, yeah, that'd be crazy. No, but bro, it's it, anywhere. It's so hard. Like the UFC reached out to me, right? To shoot content with them. I've got a media pass. So I can pretty much do as I please. Not many people can do that. Not many people can say, hey, the UFC actually messaged me on Instagram and said, hey, Jordan, we see a lot of value in the content and the type of person you are. I don't know what other brands don't see, but we do. <laughs> the biggest the biggest sporting brand in the world, they see it. And I'm not being cocky. I'm just calling a spade a spade. The mm -hmm. UFC followed me on Instagram and reached out to me. So all you fucking, you know. Anyways, it, that Volk, that Volk content, um, done some wonders, isn't it? They asked for viral content, and that's what they got. Mm. You know what I mean? Pay the pay the boy, and he'll deliver. <laughs> What's the saying go? Teach a man how to fish. Nah. Um, anyway, so give a man a fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feed him for a night. So, anyways, they. They, uh, I was like, oh, hey, can I get an extra ticket? And they were like, N they laughed. They were like, haha, ha, nah, bro. Like, so it's, it's hard. It's hard to get tickets to the UFC unless you bought, bought one. And then when they released them, it was a fucking shit show. Was it just like too many people on the website? Yeah, way too many people on the website, blah, blah, blah. Shit show, shit show. Yeah, might have to hit up the No Limit Boys again. Well, yeah, definitely. They probably, they'll definitely have some shit, yeah. Mm. Nah, not for free. I'll still pay for him. Uh, does a girl's body count matter? I think it. This is not like. I think it matters more for guys to know that, and then girls. I don't think girls really care that much, or like what guys do. Right? I think. I think it matters more when you're younger, because you know yeah. when you're like twenty, you're like oh, like anything you're gonna be with that person, you're like your whole life. Yeah, I don't think a body count really matters. Uh, I mean, Christian, Christian, would you rather a girl with a higher body count, but they're all decent guys, or a girl with a lower body count and they're dating like idiots? <sighs> to be honest with you, man, I like I. It doesn't really phase me at all. Like I don't even yeah. think about it. Like I, I think, 
I think when you're at like my age, right, like single father, two kids and stuff, I think that's just such, that's so, so small on like, you know, if anything, tell me about it. <laughs> if you get me. Nah. <laughs> if you, if you, you know what I mean? <laughs> you got a bit of that in you, eh? Got that dog in me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Tell me the D, T's and C's. Nah. <laughs> uh, but nah, fuck, bro. That, that, like, people will say that it matters. I mean, when you just know, I'm not in any position to judge. So. Yeah, hundred. You know what I mean? It's like it's hard. It's hard, bro. And I, I think when you, if that's the conversations that you're having, if someone's about you and they're a respectable woman, they bring something to the table, and they treat you with a hundred percent respect and love, then I think I feel like if you're having that sort of sort of conversation, just brings like just a lot of insecurities. Yeah, I agree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, oh, how many people <laughs> have you sat with? It's like, all right, let me just get my fucking book out and tell you. You know, like it's it's just lame, lame shit. Be interesting to know your actual number, eh? I don't know. Can you count to ten? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck around that time you stitched scope <laughs> Right here where oh, you sit. Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> that was so funny, bro. Bro, that was one of the that best was, gets. Yeah, that was one of the great gets, eh? Oh, we had the great gets me. <laughs> <laughs> Got the cunt. Oh, oh it's the shit. <laughs> what did you say? Like five? So was I was like, like <laughs> I was like, bro, what's like, what's your body? Don't say his, don't say his number. No, nah. I was like, bro, what's your body count? And he's like, you know, he said something, high you know, <laughs> high, high up there in the hundreds. <laughs> nah, I'm too not. So and he goes, and he go, and I go, I go, yeah, like, so what's your what's your, what's your body count? And he tells me, and he goes, what about you? And I and I go, oh, about five to eight. <laughs> and he was just like. And we all laughed and I just kept the straightest face, bro. And he was like, bro, he was angry, bro. And, and after the podcast, he's like, I never fucking trust you. Never, never trust you again. I was like, bro, was, we're just joking around. <laughs> the funny thing was like back in the day, I couldn't get other people, but other people could get me. You know what I mean? It was very one-sided. No, nah, no one was after you. That was just all made up in your head. Come on, mate. It wasn't me. The OG fucking get, get, get. <laughs> Great gets me. <laughs> oh. Oh. Do you know what, bro? Just taking the piss is one of my favourite things in life. Eh? Even when, like, when you, this sounds bad, but even when you're, like, down and out. Same here, bro. Yeah, there's no one funnier. There's like, no one funnier. Oh, man. Oh, like, uh, anyone for me, like, like, as I said, I screenshotted that picture of you crying. <laughs> Like when you were doing it, bro, I was smiling the whole time and not in a like a, oh, like I was like, I was like, I wasn't like, yeah, like, you know, he's upset. It was more so just like, you ugly cunt. Like, yeah. and took, I took a screenshot, bro. And the fun, I'll tell you a funny story too. I was, I was clearing up my space because my, 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 um, my, uh, I, my fucking iPhone um, memory storage, was full, storage yeah. was full. So I'm deleting all these photos and then your photo comes up, like that photo comes up and I was like, I, don't, I couldn't delete it, eh? I was like, no, nah, there's no way I'm deleting this and just skipped over that little row and just kept going. But yeah, that was one of the old times. That's one of, yeah, keep that in the memory bank. Yeah, Sometimes that, I like, if I called? can't the wake black, up. The blackmail folder? <laughs> <laughs> if I can't, do you still have it up? Uh, Yeah. If I can't, if I can't like, like if I can't get out of bed some mornings, so I like, I look, at, <laughs> look it up and it motivates me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, uh, what else we got in here? Uh, <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah, I've got it. Um, <coughs> different to lifestyle, ice very structured and planned and smart. Semi very flexible and not so smart. Yeah, I mean, is that what they said? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, Aiden Adams. I mean. Two S's. I mean, in regards to not smart, like maybe in the past, but now I like... <laughs> I mean, like, I made, like, 30 grand in the last two weeks. So if that's not smart, then fucking you tell me. Can, can you read? No, I, can't. Oh, I can read. Yeah, I can read. I can't spell. Like, yeah. I literally can't spell. And, like, when you when someone asks me to read or spell in front of people, it makes it, like, worse. Fuck, the amount of spelling errors I've got on all my content. I just, I don't never check anything. I just type and go ahead. Because you can get about another 20 pieces of content today. I mean, uh, I, I, I just... I just guess like we're well wasting our time learning how to speed and read and spell anyway. So I'm, I'm, I'm in front of everyone. 
Foot fetishes and tickling fetishes. Are your feet ticklish? Yeah. Isn't everyone's? No. Nah. I mean, if your feet aren't ticklish, I mean. That's a serial killer, right? You got that sleeve feet. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's off a movie, so don't quote me on that. Um, uh, foot, yeah. Foot fetishes is a weird one. Like, are you're into feet, aren't you? No. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. You're not? Changed? I've never been into feet. And I will not say I'm not into feet. Like I'm like I mean the boys used to call me foot locker on growing <laughs> up, but I'm just I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Oh. Uh, all right, fuck. What's on this weekend? Have you ever met anyone with athlete's foot <laughs> in your mouth? Oh, no. Oh imagine that. Um oh, what am I up to this weekend? We'll be in We're going a, to the Goldie. Yeah, we'll be in Goldie. If I'm going to Rick Shaw's. Let's go to let's book in Rick Shaw's and um I'll book it for you. Oh, okay. Whatever. Big dick. <laughs> Anyone can book it. <laughs> we'll go Rick Shaw's into Don't try and hang out for me in Kuwait. Oh please. Stop. <laughs> How come he don't like you? Well, he gave me his ten jersey and said carry the flag. <laughs> Whatever that means. Mm. Off the field. Uh yeah, Goldie's gonna be cool. I like Goldie. Why are you going up there? Who are you seeing? Quaid. Nah, it's got to be someone else here up there seeing. Larry? Oh, you know, have you met our friend Kung Fu, Henny? James? Oh, I think so. He's a man. He's cool, Kung. Yeah, I'm keen to get oh. a little... Should we get a little crew together and go to Rick Rick Hee-Hars? Yeah, we'll see if there's a spot open. Um, if me and Quaid... Nah, I've got to, to see any guys. I'm going to hang out with my kids and then see what my ex does. Oh, yeah, we'll get the kids in for a photo, me and Quaid. Millie will hate you too. I've been whispering, <laughs> whispering in her ear hey, this, for years. Oh, Dad, is this the guy that gave you an opportunity? <laughs> nah, is this the guy that's fucking. <laughs> you're welcome. Bisexual. To, you're, <laughs> you're welcome too. Nah, man. Mm. Nah. Oh, is this the guy that put you on the map? <laughs> <laughs> hey, how many times do I need to say thank you until you Once? say thank you? Once? Who put your ass on the map? Mm, you guys took me off the car. <laughs> Bro, I full put you on the map, like in the cool map. No, you're in you're in that spectrum map. No, you were scaffolding down in. <laughs> was I was area? one of the the worst scaffolders of our time. You didn't even have your tickets too. That's illegal. No, I did. Yes, it is. No, nah. bro, I was I, I I was a TA, but the boys <laughs> the boys called me advanced like streetwise. <laughs> What's a TA? Joe, like trade assistant, like groundy. Oh. Is that the lingo? Simi, grab the belt, grab the harness. You're up here. Boom. Just fucking. Are you good at fights? Not anymore, I'm not. Oh, yeah. After I had mushrooms one time, I just lost that, that neck. You were a bit scared on Melbourne, eh? Bro, like, I used to, I used to climb, like, the side of scaffoldings and, like, put tarps up and shit during, like, storm, like, dust storms and shit in the, in the, like, full climb up. And I'd have my harness on, but I wouldn't, like, because you got to do, like, one anchor point to another, so you just, like, switch it over and keep climbing. Mm. But, I don't know. Like I just, I'm scared of heights now. Yeah, fuck that. I'm more, I'm more cautious. I've never been heights. up. I've never been this high ever. <laughs> Hang around me, kid. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, Do you get a kick out of calling people older than your kid? You're not older than me. No, like I mean, just in general. Who do I call older than me, kid? <laughs> But you, you say it in like a like a demeaning <laughs> way. Like it's actually weird. Like I think you get a I, kick, I think kick I only say it to it. you because I Nah, you I say know, it to a lot of people, kid. I, I know how it makes how annoyed you get with it. Nah. Happy birthday, kid. All the best. <laughs> like not to me, like to other people. It's fucking weird actually. Um yo, out of nothing. Done? Yeah. Got anything? Wanna no. wanna, wanna round it off with something? I'll round it off with this. Are you the same animal, but a different beast? <laughs> Stop I get those goosebumps every time. Yeah. <laughs> I need a... Be safe this weekend, man. Call yeah. up your family. Call up your loved ones. Tell them you love them. Get after it. If you're in a bad place in life, just take one step after the other, man. Go to the gym. Get some fitness into you. And just fucking win. Let's win all together. That's, That's what I'll leave with, man. If you're in the Gold Coast and you see us around, come say hello. See you guys Rick later. Rick Shaw's at 12. <laughs> <laughs> later.